So, when all else fails, call your opponent a racist is the tactics that's being applied to Joe Rogan at the moment. So you, you may be aware that we've covered this quite a lot. You can go watch our previous coverage on YouTube or on various podcasts where he was accused of spreading disinformation uh, and Rogan put out a confident video dismissing their concerns. And uh, Spotify decided, well, let's put up some disclaimers on the COVID podcasts. And uh, the leftists who are trying to topple Rogan have been quite frustrated. Uh, none of them have been successful so far. And there, there's a surprising paucity of people who have actually pulled their stuff from Spotify. Uh, so The Sun has done a, a quick list here. Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, Nils Lofgren, India Ari, Crosby, Stills and Nash, Failure. Who the hell are they? Oh. Well, uh to put a bit of musical knowledge in here, Crosby, yeah, Stills, ahead. and Nash were associated with Neil Young. They were part of a big group right, together. Okay. It was Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Right. So they might just be sticking by him. Right, okay, Even yeah. though, as far as I'm aware, yeah. they all hate each other yeah. fiercely, as most bands do. Yeah, there were some other people who are apparently notable, like authors and stuff. Brenny, Brown, Mary Trump, and Roxanne Gay. Now, Roxanne Gay was the only one of these I'd heard about, I'd have heard of. She wrote a book called Bad Feminist. Uh, well, do you not know uh, Mary Trump? No. She's Trump's niece, whose entire career oh. so far has been built off of writing whining. books. Right, yeah, yeah, whining about yeah. him. Right. But anyway, so the New York, uh, no, sorry, Rolling Stone uh, did an interview with her and talked about this. And uh, she was just tweeting out, well, and it was really, really sad, to be honest. It was kind of sad and pathetic because she realized that this is not going to actually be any part of the decisive movement. As she says, it's not going to move the needle in any way. It's like, it's not. Um, and then she she also says, I'm not trying to impede anyone's freedom to speak. Joe Rogan and others like him continue to, can continue to proudly engage, encourage misinformation and bigotry to vast audiences. Great, what are you whining about then? If, if, if that's fine. <laughs> Great. <laughs> they will be well rewarded for their efforts. These platforms sharing these rewards can continue to look the other way. But today, at least I won't. self cancelling feminists. Love it. Love to see it. But anyway, then it got a bit more extreme when the White House decided, actually, no, Spotify should do more about Joe Rogan. Uh, Jen Psaki, uh, after they put out the, uh, the information they're going to put up, the COVID warnings, they were like, great, but you should do more not exactly specifying what more should be done or more could be done um, actually means. Um, but uh, yeah, so presumably the implication is Joe Rogan should probably be censored, uh, which of course would be a violation of the First Amendment. So they're just using their bully pulpit there to uh, pressure them, but they can't really do anything. I mean, she said that the company could take steps if it wanted to, to actively prohibit content. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you, Jen. And then uh, you got this really gross, like, shaming tactic that came out. And this is, for an example, from the Washington Post, where uh, this person, uh, I can't remember, the, who was it, the name of the person who wrote it? Just some Scroll gross, down a bit, John, just so if we can see some the Some gross journo, basically. Um, Margaret, Margaret Sullivan. Sullivan. There we go. Uh, I, she says, I'm disgusted by Joe Rogan's weak apology. My former colleague's death at 47 makes it worse. I, I don't think Joe Rogan held the cushion over your colleague's head, <laughs> no, personally. No. Well, we know he didn't. Rogan's non-apology made me furious, probably because I've been spending a lot of time this week thinking about Miguel Rodriguez, Ro Rodriguez a former colleague of mine. It's like the Mexican equivalent of John Smith, uh, <laughs> who died of COVID last week. He was overweight and asthmatic. In other words, very much at risk. And he was unvaccinated. What's it got to do with Joe Rogan? Yeah. Right. He, made, he made his own decision. The results are what they are. I mean, that's that was his decision. I don't know for sure whether getting vaccination and boost shots would have saved his life. I have no idea whether he'd ever <laughs> listened to Joe Rogan's podcast or <laughs> what his precise reasons for, were for not being vaccinated. <laughs> but it's still Joe Rogan's fault. And why are you bringing Joe Rogan into this? Anyway... On the other side, there are a bunch of celebrities who are supporting Joe Rogan. So you've got uh, a bunch of people that I've basically never heard of. Kevin James, Jewel, Kat Von D, Troy Aikman, Jamie Kennedy, Andrew Schultz, DJ Cascade, Andrew Dice Clay, Michael Yo, Jenny Farley, Kelly Slater, Marianne Williamson, and Tulsi Gabbard. The last two were Democratic primary candidates to try and be uh, the presidential candidate. Uh, so at least I know who they are. Um, and one other notable on that list was The Rock. That's right, Dwayne Johnson. No, was. Was on that list. Uh, he had also, after Joe Rogan put out this uh, first video, he'd said, great stuff here, brother, perfectly articulated. Looking forward to coming on one day and breaking out the tequila with you onto his podcast. That's lovely. And then this mysterious video showed up. A mysterious N-word <coughs> compilation of Joe Rogan saying the N-word. Just came from nowhere, apparently, and it sort of rose to prominence when musician India Ari one of the people who pull their po podcast from Spotify, posted this compilation to her Instagram story. 
Now, she obviously didn't make the compilation. She had obviously found it somewhere. Where had it come from? Well, this is where the opposition research comes in. It apparently came from a Twitter account called Patriot Takes. Yes, I've been seeing this being passed around mm. on Spotify for a good few weeks at this point, and it seems that after the initial attempts to cancel Joe Rogan failed, all of a sudden, because this had been sort mm -hmm. of in the public consciousness, they just picked up on this and went, yep. well, this has just sort of been in replies so can't far. Get him for, can't get him for COVID misinformation? We'll get him for the N-word. Yes, yeah, so we're going to take these clips of him completely out of context, mm -hmm. saying it, and then just say, obviously, this just means he's a racist. Exactly. So now, we already know from this who or what kind of people are behind this, right? Because compilations of the N-word are like the nuclear button when it comes to mm. progressives trying to get someone cancelled. It's like, look, we've, we, we were playing nice, you were just spreading COVID misinformation, but now you're calling all black people everywhere the N-word, as far as we're concerned. And so, I love this, this is who the right is defending, it's just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we believe in <laughs> free what? speech. Yeah, exactly. Right? And, and also, it's they've combed through so much, because Joe Rogan's Decades. got almost 2,000 like, podcasts. You can see from the setup there, yeah. he's still got a full head of hair <laughs> in, in, some of, in some of these yeah. pictures, and a full beard, and he's sat on his couch in his living room. Yeah. These are from, like, 12 years ago at least. Exactly. You, you can see how old some of these are. So who are Patriot Takes? Who are they? Where did they come from? Well, if you get to their website, they call themselves... Uh, they claim that they're exposing right-wing extremism. They say, Our miss mission is to research, monitor, and expose the extremism and radicalization of the far right across the darkest parts of the internet. So they're basically like an American version of Hope Not Hate. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Uh, and so they, they take on uh, the far-right disinformation machine. Your donations allow our researchers to stay vigilant and monitor far-right platforms. They're a less leftist advocacy group. And in their Twitter bio, they say they're partnered with Midas Touch. Well, who's Midas Touch? Well, if we get to the next one. Uh, they, Midas Touch is, as you see, like all of these GOP hashtag, they're, they're an active advocacy group against the Republicans. That's what they are. They are also a pack, a super pack, right? They say, created in quarantine by three brothers, Midas Touch is a pro-democracy next generation super pack founded by three siblings and lifelong Democrats mm. with the prime, and they say that, with the primary goals of protecting American democracy, defeating Trumpism, and holding Republicans accountable. Right, so Democrat opposition researchers. This is a transparent political hatchet job, right? And we get some information about the, uh, the actual guys. One of them, one of the brothers is called Ben, and he represented Colin Kepernick in his highly publicized lawsuit against the NFL and led a class action lawsuit against Billy McFarland and the Fire Festival. Do you remember the Fire Festival? Um, I remember the Netflix documentary being quite right. well known about it. I've not watched it, though. Yeah. I've got tangential don't, details. Don't worry, you don't need to. But you, you can see the, uh, the waters in which they're swimming. Here, I can right? see the aura of soy. Yes, emanating is, off all three of there them. There is also that. Right. Brett is a two-time Emmy Award-winning video editor and digital media strategist. He was a video editor for The Ellen DeGeneres <laughs> Show for over five years and ran a digital media and sports organization, blah, blah, blah. Right, so, okay, so he's the a video editor for Ellen DeGeneres. How did that all end up? Well, it came down in, in flames, didn't it? And uh, Jordan is a marketing account su supervisor based in New York City, responsible for running campaigns and act activations with some of the world's top brands, including HBO, the NFL, and AT&T. Corporates. That's who these are. Think cyberpunk. Think the cyberpunk corpos. That's what we're looking at here. Partisan Democrat corpos. And they compiled this smear job against Joe Rogan, put it out on the internet, and now, poof. This is the scandal. And uh, and so this came to The Rock's attention, of course, because why would The Rock have known anything about Joe Rogan prior to supporting him? And uh, so this is an author called Don Winslow, uh, presumably also in the same circles. Dear The Rock, you're a hero to many, and using your platform to defend Joe Rogan, a guy that used and laughed about using the N-word dozens of times, is a terrible use of your power. Have you actually listened to this man's many racist statements about black people? Could you provide any examples of them? Well, I mean, there's a compilation of the N-word. That's not... <laughs> <laughs> I agree, that's that's not proof that Joe Rogan's a racist. Uh, but The Rock was like, oh, oh, I see the hatchet job. Oh, I may be 10 foot tall and able to literally lift a house, but I'm also going to back away from this slowly like an absolute coward. Thank you so much for this. 
I hear that you, as well as everyone in it here, 100%. I was not aware of his N-word use prior to my comments, but now I've become educated to his complete narrative. Learning moment for me. God damn. How can such a huge, strong, famous guy bend the knee so submissively? It's so disappointing to see The Rock, of all people, be so cooked. All that trash talking turned out <laughs> it was all fake. Your name is literally, well, your stage name is literally The Rock. I think you'd be a bit more solid yes. in your support, sorry. Actually, The Play-Doh. Uh, anyway, so who's who's Don Winslow? Well, he writes books. And what does he write in his books? The N-word. A lot. A lot. We can go to the next one. So you can just, if you just scroll down. Uh, Vocal Distance done a good job finding this. If you just scroll down, you can see uh, screenshots. And you just keep going. It says quite a few. Um, you can just see <laughs> highlighted the N-word there. Uh, and keep going. Keep going. There's 15 of these. Where it's just constant use of the N-word. Way more than Joe Rogan used it. But it doesn't matter, right? Because that's not what this is about. This is about repressive tolerance. This is a blade that only cuts one way. It doesn't matter that someone who has used the N-word in his writing over and over and over is going after uh, Joe Rogan for saying the N-word occasionally in the last, like, 12 years or something, when it's in a particular context where they're talking about that offensive word. Not calling a black person it, obviously. Um, but this doesn't matter. And we explain why in the Repressive Tolerance podcast that we have on LotusSeeds.com. So if you'd like to support us and uh, find out what Repressive Tolerance is and why this blade only cuts one way, you can go sign up and support us and check that out. But anyway, so after that, a compilation came out from the Young Turks because people were like, well, look, it ain't just Joe Rogan who said the N-word a lot. Turns out, like, literally everyone on the Young Turks has said it. Cenk, Anna, and Hassan have all said the N-word. Not against black people, of course. Just, again, in context, it's not that radical. And you can see that a lot of these are quite old clips. Again, just like the Rogan. Because if you go back, say, 10 or 15 years, if you were just saying it, like, you weren't screeching it at a black person. If you were just saying it, it wasn't, like verboten in the way that it's become now that it's just having had said it means that that's an irreparable stain on your reputation and will be for the rest of time and so this was going around and as you see quite a few people saw this and so anna kasparian basically had to come out and be reasonable for once Surprising. That's a, that's a shock. Back in the day, we had a policy on TYT when covering gross statements made by racists. Instead of sanitizing their quotes with the N-word, we would read the quotes verbatim. Context does matter. Cancel me if you like. Don't care. Well, you have to say that, really, when there are loads of clips of you going around saying it. But at the, sa at the same time, it is I, am, true, yeah. I am happy to see that she's at least standing by their former position and, and, <laughs> yes. and being reasonable about it, because it could be very easy for her to just try and do the same sort of thing that a Don Winslow would do, which is either ignore it or come out and try and recontextualize it with, mm. well, it's different when I do it, you know. But again, the blade only cuts one way. She's not under the cutting edge of the blade at the moment, so she can just stand elsewhere going, blah, 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 cancel me, I don't care. Well, she would care if the blade were to turn back on her, but of course she's a left-winger, so it doesn't affect her. Not that Joe Rogan is a right-winger or something, but like, you know He's what a I Bernie mean. bro. Yeah, yeah, but he's also not part of the team, right? No. There are people who are part of the team who spout the official gated narrative, and Anna Kasparin is one of them. Joe Rogan is not one of them, and that's how this works. Uh, and of course, Joe Biden has been saying the N-word in, like, Congress or wherever, in the Senate. And uh, does it matter? Of course it doesn't matter. Why would that matter? What difference does it make? He's not the one in the in the line of cutting. But anyway, you get other people like uh, Bolsonaro, who's pro-N-word. <laughs> I'm not saying that he is actually pro-N-word, but it's funny. If freedom of speech means anything, it means that people should be free to say what they think, no matter, whether, uh, no matter if they disagree or agree with us. Stand your ground. Hugs from Brazil. That's nice, isn't it? But anyway, so what did Joe Rogan do? He did the absolute wrong thing, yes. sadly. He did the worst thing, and he bent the knee. Let's play the clip. There's nothing I can do to take that back. I wish I could. Obviously, that's not possible. I do hope that, if anything, that this can be a teachable moment. Because I never thought it would ever be taken out of context and put in a video like that. And now that it is... Holy shit, looks bad. And it it's part of also me doing this podcast for thousands of hours, thousands of episodes, over 12 years. I've said a lot of stupid shit, which is fine when you're talking about most things, but not when you're talking about race. Right. So there we go. Right. He he un he understands. Oh, my God, it's been cut up and it looks bad. Yes, it looks bad. That was going great 
up until that last bit. Yes. When he, he totally concedes their point, which leads to a collapse of his ability to defend himself. Uh, and instead, he has essentially embraced this smear as being legitimate. When it's not legitimate, this was a political hack job done by a bunch of corpos who are Democrat fundraisers. And as I understand it, they've raised millions as well. Uh, mm. But, you know, it, it doesn't matter that, the you know, this is obviously something that's just been done to attack your character. As if you haven't had loads of black guests on and whatnot and they don't think you're a racist. No one up until this moment oh. was saying Joe Rogan is a racist. One of the most recent ones that I listened to was him talking with Snoop Dogg. Yeah. And they were getting on just fine. Of course they, they were. They were smoking a joint together in the, <laughs> in the studio because of course they were. Of course they were because nobody thinks that Joe Rogan is a racist. And so compiling all of his uses over the last decade or so of him saying the N-word... It looks bad, and that's why they did it. And so what Joe should have done is attacked whoever made the smear job for producing the smear job, and for those people pushing the smear job for pushing a smear job, because it is the act of pushing a smear job that is, in and of itself, morally reprehensible. This would have given Joe a good place to push back from, because... As we all know, there is no apology that is enough for these people. As CNN went on to beautifully demonstrate for us. Let's play the next clip. There are reasons why Rogan has lots of fans, millions of fans. People want to hear his candid conversations, but there's a difference between that, between candid, in-depth conversations and the kind of vile that's in this compilation, Jim. Right, and it's not just like it happened one time. It, it has happened repeatedly over the years, and, you know, it seems to me he's going to have to do more than put out an apology video, a profanity-laced apology video, uh, to, to put this matter to rest. Well, then what's he going to have to do? Grovel? Eat dirt? Cancel himself off yeah. of Spotify. I imagine that's what they want. I mean, the, exactly. the, the, the whole point with the whole not apologizing thing is that by doing so, you're showing that in your own standards, you have done something wrong. Yes. And if you uh, accept that you've done something wrong, then, then they're just going to go, right, so we were right to cancel you in the first place then. Exactly. It justifies everything that they've done up until this point, including the deceptive hit piece smear job that they have clipped together to make you look bad. When in context, not None of these things were as bad as they are claiming, if bad at all. And again, this is not a standard I particularly hold. I don't think that the use of the N-word is evil in every context. I'm sorry, but then I'm not an American, so what do I know? But of course, uh, it goes on. I mean, Spotify, now the knee has been bent. The, uh, the, the beatings will continue until morale improves. They've pulled 113 episodes of the Joe Rogan podcast now. So where does this end? And it's a really bizarre uh, list as well. Um, people like Kyle Kalinsky, Gad Sad. Well, do we know if every single one of those were ones where it was like he said the N-word or something? Because I put right. that forward as a joke when we were discussing it at first. And then it was like, well, it looks like it might be. But I do yeah. also think some of them might have been guests who have gone like, well, I don't want my name associated with him anymore, potentially. <laughs> it's possible, but I haven't heard any any reason to think that. I've no, yeah. not heard anyone saying that. It is it is very uh, strange, and you are right, of where does this go? Where does, where does it stop? Is 113 enough? Is everyone well, happy that, now? Until the next time. And now more have to be pulled. But um, they, they make a good point in this Forbes article that uh, all except one of the episodes were recorded before the coronavirus pandemic, so it's unlikely that their removal was linked to his claims about COVID-19. Mm. So, and, and this was Gad Sad's thought. He's like, well, maybe it was the N-word that got these episodes pulled. And it's like, okay, maybe. Um, and apparently they say it was Rogan's decision to remove the episodes after consulting with, and consulting with Spotify Bloomberg reports. So it seems that these may well be uh, the episodes where the N-word is said in some context. And Rogan, having conceded the point completely, just collapses entirely. And the Spotify CEO is like, look, this is a slippery slope. Are we sure we want to, we want to be on it? It's like, well, you you guys agreed to any of this you didn't have to agree to any of this or if someone was coercing you maybe you should have said so you know if something if someone was holding something over you and your company so spotify chief executive daniel eck has written a note to the company's employees stating that cancelling joe rogan was not the answer while I, and they, remember there are a lot of people in spotify who are leftist lunatics who want him cancelled who never wanted him on there yes. in the first place exactly and they, they've had protests and things like this um while I strongly condemn what Joe has said, and I agree with uh, his decision to remove past episodes from our platform, uh, uh, I've realised some will want more. And I want to make that one point very clear. I do not believe that silencing Joe is the answer. Well, you have paid £100 million for him, so I bet you don't think that's the answer. 
We should have clear lines around content and take action when they are crossed, but cancelling voices is a slippery slope. Looking at the issue more broadly, it's critical thinking and open debate that powers real and necessary progress. Yeah, of course. This is your $100 million golden goose. But where is the line and why does it keep moving? How are you going to draw a firm straight line? If you can't do it with Joe Rogan, who can you do it with? And remember, these people are not above cancelling anyone. <coughs> right? The council's sitting president, for Christ's sake. You know, there, there's absolutely no way they're going to look at another person and be like, well, that's definitely not a person who can be cancelled. You know, anyone can be cancelled for opposing the institutional gated narrative. And you've already given a lot of ground anyway. And also, right, Eck also said he would commit $100 million to license and develop music and other audio projects from the historically marginalised communities. So here's the tithe, 100 million. I gave 100 million to Joe Rogan to be a normal person. I'm going to give 100 million to radical leftists to promote that absolute garbage that nobody watches and is interested in. This is this is literally a, 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 a what's the jizya that the yeah. non-Muslims have to pay? This is the, 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 a, a non-Muslim tax, a non-progressive tax. Just from a business perspective, that's a terrible idea because you, sure. you, you said to yourself, nobody watches this stuff. We see from all the leftist media on HBO and Netflix mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff, you spend hundreds of millions of dollars on it and nobody watches it and you've tailored it specifically for these people who never watched it in the first place. Yeah. When you change all the superheroes, when you change all of the legacy media, mm -hmm. these people don't care because they just wanted it as an act of submission. Yes, that's exactly right. And the thing is, and the worst part about all of this is that Joe Rogan himself knows this, as he said previously. And you made a really good point. You said the thing is, if you censor yourself just one percent, you say, I'll just censor myself one percent. That's what they want. I'm going to make them happy. And then they're just going to keep moving it. They're just going to keep moving it forward, moving, moving the goalposts, forward, moving the goalposts, and providing you with more money and giving you more things, but keep moving it in a certain direction. And if you keep giving into it, they're going to have a hold of you and they can control you. And Great that's point. They, that's what they've got of Joe. He's fallen exactly into that trap. Yeah, he already knows they've lied about him. CNN mm -hmm. lying about him in the past. They're just going to keep lying to you about you until you get what you want, which is why you do not give in. Yeah. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the epochs that went up over the weekend as between Bo and special guest Apostolic Majesty about the origins of World War I. If you want to find out what else is coming out on the website, you can always follow us at getter at lotuseaters underscore com being the at. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>